Hey, welcome folks. I see you found your way back. Pretty good navigation skills on the old interwebs. <laughs> if you're new here, uh, my name's Rick and my wife and I are building a 31 foot diesel trawler in our backyard. Welcome aboard. This is going to be another super exciting episode this week. You might want to burrito yourself in a blanket so you don't get overstimulated. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, we're pulling some wires this week. It's been a long time coming. Uh, things are going pretty well. It's not professional, but it's pretty good for an am amateur fight. You say so myself. There's a time lapse that I talked about the last time at the end of this movie. If you're having trouble getting to sleep, you can check that out. I'm pretty sure it's going to send you right off to La La Land. So, anyways, grab a coffee, settle in, enjoy the show. So, let's jump right into it. Wiring the boats, one of the tasks that I've been looking forward to for a long, long time. Uh, growing up, I was always tinkering with wiring and cars, installing stereos and speakers and all that kind of stuff. And then when we got our first boat and then our second boat, they, both of them needed to be rewired. So I have a pretty good idea what I'm doing. Um, but that plan was devised years ago and it's kind of out of date. But this part is just infrastructure and uh, it's pretty straightforward. So as you see here, you know you're making progress building your boat when you're drilling holes in it. And I had to drill quite a few holes to uh, make way for the wires to pass through the to cabin top support beams, etc. But that's just part and parcel of the whole thing. Um, I think what got me uh, right from the start was the amount of wire that I'm going to have to pull. And there's a lot of things going on here. So there's quite a few things that all seem to pile up right at the front of the cabin above the helm station. Uh, things that will be installed in the front or on the cabin roof are things like searchlights, windshield wipers, horn, docking lights, uh, tank sensors, a mimic panel, VHF radio, a number of 12 volt accessories, and uh, dome lights, etc. There's a few other things I can't remember them right now. This uh, port side of the cabin is uh, going to be Lori's little domain and uh, she has a requirement for an AC outlet for her laptop, uh, USB outlets for charging all of her devices. Uh, she'll probably have access or be able to at least see the chart plotter from where she sits. And we have a little chart table that we're going to insert right basically where that piece of paper is where uh, she'll have like a desk. trying to be very careful, uh, make sure I mark and identify all the wires and there's not really any special coding or naming conventions or anything but everywhere on the boat where there's a light fixture or a switch or something that penetrates through the cabin top or the cabin front, we've got labeled. So you basically have to pull a, a lot of extra wire just to make sure that you're going to make it because the other end of these uh, branch circuits will all be connected to the electrical panel behind the helm. So usually 
when you run these circuits, you try and leave extra in a loop. It's called a service loop, so in case you ever had to extend a wire or change a connector or something, you've got extra wire to do that. <laughs> these are just a couple of funny clips that I recorded, I don't know why, but I made short videos out of them and people watched it, so I guess they thought it was okay. But, you know, this is all part and parcel. you got to figure out where wires are coming from and going to and run them through these chase tubes, etc. And uh, that was fun. So I showed you the wire going into the chase tube and this is the other end of the equation where the wire is coming out of the chase tube. Well, I'm not an expert at this but uh, I kind of had an idea in my mind for a long time what I expected this would look like. And it certainly didn't look like this wire mess, but we'll straighten all that up later. First, just strip it. Then you crimp it. Then you shrink it. I missed marking it, but the next step is to screw it into place. This is the ground bus on the other side of the panel, and the process is exactly the same. Here I'm just trying to straighten things up a little bit, just to make it a little neater. It'll all get reworked later.
imagine the pros do this kind of thing as they go to keep it neat, keep it organized, but I'm definitely not a pro and it shows. yellow cable on the right is uh, the ground circuit that comes from the main control panel and this little fuse box here in the center is just a sub panel. So that's about it. The rest of the week was just filled with more of the same pulling wires, fixing the wires, attaching the fuse panel, etc. etc. I think you get the idea. I shudder to think that at some point in time I might have to tear this all apart and do it all over again. Let's hope that doesn't happen. So that's it for this week's episode, folks. I'd really like to thank you all for hanging in with us. Um, our little channel is doing pretty good, mostly running on the backs of these little short videos that I post every day. They seem to be popular, so we'll keep trying it. Yeah. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. We're getting quite a few now, and it's looking pretty promising. And if you subscribe to our channel, you can ring the bell, and they'll send you a notification every time we publish a new video. So, there you have it. From Lori and I, thank you very much for looking in. We appreciate each and every one of you coming every week to, to check out our project. And until the next time, cheers. Now behave yourselves.
Thank you.